Hey, so it seems like anytime you want to deploy or do something production related, you hear the word Kubernetes over and over and over. And it's got me thinking, is there a time when you would not want to use Kubernetes? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Will from DevOps for Developers. And I just wanted to bring up some different points and considerations in this video about when you should use Kubernetes and when you should look for something else, right? Because there's a lot of um, a lot of hype surrounding Kubernetes right now and everybody wants to use it, but there's also some pitfalls and gotchas because it's not really um, a user-friendly, maybe that's not the right word, but um, like there's places it'll come back to hurt you, right? So let's just wait for that plane to go by. A few moments later. No rich dude who has his own plane. You just take your time. One eternity later. All good? Is it convenient for you? Oh, that's fantastic. So some of the features that Kubernetes have has that makes it compelling is that it's easy to scale and deploy your application, right? But underneath that, there's like this huge complex infrastructure that makes it work. I mean, we're talking about things like managing nodes, um, DNS, volume mounts, secrets, dynamically provisioned storage, and role and access-based controls. All that stuff has to be taken care of or your dreams and hopes of just deploying to Kubernetes and letting it scale everything for you are gonna be shattered as you go from one outage to another outage to another outage as your Kubernetes cluster just crashes in on itself. So if you're going to have your own Kubernetes cluster, you've got to have the technical resources in order to maintain and support that. And so for a lot of companies that have their own IT staff or had their own data centers, uh, especially if you're going to try and run Kubernetes on bare metal, you know, they typically have that IT support staff in place already. And I think that really leads me into what I think are the defining criteria as to whether or not you need Kubernetes. So first of all, are you doing Kubernetes on bare metal? If so, you've got to have, you know, your IT support staff and um, your network guys and your sysadmins all in place and ready to roll on this, which is probably the case already if you have your own data center. So there's a bit of a learning curve with Kubernetes but given the right application, it may be the right answer for you. And we'll talk about what that right application is here in just a minute. Now, if you don't have those IT and sysadmin resources and you still want to use Kubernetes, um, I would look for a managed Kubernetes provider, you know, something like uh, GKE or um, EKS for Amazon or Azure Kubernetes, you know, one of those and let those guys manage the underlying infrastructure for you and you just take care of deploying the application yourself. And again, the reason for that is because managing and monitoring and maintaining Kubernetes is a beast task and it's one that you don't really want to take on by yourself if you don't have to or you don't have a specific requirement that's forcing you to do that. So that takes us right into what type of applications are good candidates for deploying on Kubernetes. I mean, it's really, in my opinion, it needs to be an application that's worthy of the features that Kubernetes is offering. You know, Kubernetes is offering um, scalability and um, like really in that microservices type environment of uh, managing the communication and the DNS and the networking between those different microservices. And so your application really needs to be built like that or represent the need for those features for Kubernetes to make a lot of sense for you. In contrast, if your application is something where it's like, you know, a, a static HTML site or um, like a single page application, like a React style app that can be deployed on CDN, and then you've got maybe a back-end API server, a database, and possibly a, a message queuing server like um, RabbitMQ or Elastic Cache or something like that. I'm not sure that that is a great use case for Kubernetes because you're taking on a lot of overhead with Kubernetes and you could deploy an app like that using something really simple like, um, you know, if you look at Heroku, that's their business model is 
provisioning and supporting those apps and you can scale like crazy on Heroku. You could also look at DigitalOcean if you are insistent on the AWS infrastructure. You know, you could possibly run this as a Lambda function um, or for sure you could run it on uh, AWS Fargate. And I think Fargate's a really interesting product from AWS because it feels like it's just managed Kubernetes for you. So I know uh, Amazon has the EKS service, you know, the Elastic Kubernetes service, where they say, yep, here you go, here's Kubernetes for you and you can use it, we'll take care of it. And Fargate's like one layer abstracted beyond that. So you get all of the Kubernetes style features, but you don't even care if it's actually Kubernetes under the hood or not. And that's, um, I've actually used Fargate to scale some pretty significant applications and it's a, a really good way to go if you wanna hit that sweet spot between um, scalability, deployability, but not taking on the administrative overhead of Kubernetes. So I hope that was helpful for you in providing some of the considerations of when Kubernetes might be a good fit. You know, if you're using or looking at Kubernetes, it should be because Kubernetes is offering the features and the scalability that meet the needs of your application. And if you don't specifically have a need to address those requirements, I don't think Kubernetes is a good fit. It just brings too many other problems or maintenance tasks to the table that you don't want to and possibly aren't prepared to deal with at this time. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And um, hey, by the way, I wrote this book, The DevOps Career Guide. It covers this and a lot of other topics that you're gonna need to know if you're gonna be successful in the DevOps career. So I'll put a link in the description down below. You can get it as a paperback copy. You can get it in Kindle. You can get it in Kindle Unlimited. And um, also, would you pass a DevOps interview? I've got a DevOps quiz for that. Head over to my website. Again, I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, it's a cool little quiz you can take to see if you would pass a DevOps interview. I'll see y'all next time.